are at the end-to-end -end tour of the Google Cloud Platform. You've gotten all settled and you're ready to go. Um, we thought in order to give you this tour, we'd build out a real application. Uh, we're going to extend that uh, meme app, cloud meme application that we saw in the keynote. And we're going to show you some real business logic written in App Engine uh, and having that run on the server. And we're going to build that application in just 50 minutes that we have left here. So I think that's going to be great. Don't you think it's Wait, Brad, let's build something a little more real world. I mean, you're just talking about an App Engine app. I mean, it's a meme. We're going to have to store these memes somewhere. So okay, about that? Well, I think we may have time. If we, if we push it, we may have time to also store the images. Let's store that in a cloud storage bucket. Um, OK, so I think we can get these two things done. Wait, wait, wait hold, hold, right? on, hold on, hold on. We've got to store the metadata somewhere. You're going to have metadata. You're going to have user info. You're going to have voting, maybe. You're going to, things associated with the meme. Yeah. Where are we going to put that? I don't know. Uh, what, what, what data stores do you guys use? What's popular? No, no one's volunteering. What's well, popular look, Brad, to you then? I think we should go open source with this. I'll be honest. Open source, OK. I think I've been using Mongo lately, and I think it's a good, I think it's a good option for us. MongoDB users, any MongoDB in here? Yes, a couple. OK, fantastic. Fine, I think probably we could get a few of the records, some metadata stored in MongoDB okay. uh, running on a GCE instance. But now we really, we just got to get started on this now if we're going to finish Wait, 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 slow down, Brad. We've got to get a real, like, this has got to be real world. People are using yes. their mobile phones more and more, let's face it, all the mobile. time. And frankly, they're going to expect some kind of mobile interface. Awesome. Well, I guess, you know, he's running the demo. We got to do it. Uh, so we'll expose this as a set of REST endpoints and then consume it as uh, an Android application so that you can get, you can view and create those memes on the client. So what we end up with is a very basic cloud meme application running on the phone lets you view the memes and lets you go and create new ones. So I'm going to start where everyone starts for Google products, cloud.google.com, and I'll go to the App Engine page first. And from there, we'll go ahead and try it now. Yeah, so you go ahead and give that uh, any name you want. Use your All right. freedom there, Brian. <laughs> so we're just titling this project, our cloud meme back in. And then Brian's going to get to select whatever language he wants. You know, I'm a sort of a Java fan myself. I have to be honest, I'm a fan of Python right now. Python. I think we should really go with space, Python. This, this thing, come on, it'll never <laughs> catch on. But I guess you've got the keyboard, so. Well, look, Brad, we can even try it now. Well, that's great. So mm -hmm. you can interact with this sample right here in the browser. There's several for some popular Python frameworks. Uh, uh, you can go make a change and then run it right here in the browser, and you can see your live changes uh, come up. So this helps people that are maybe new to the platform. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> helps people that are new to the platform uh, get started. Absolutely. And look, the next step we're going to have to do is install our the yep. G Cloud. Yeah, so now we're going to provision Brian's machine here with the latest version of G Cloud. We have a curl based install, so it's very easy to get up and going. And I think Brian's already well, got this installed. I think so I'll just leave the one I have. <laughs> maybe we'll skip the install step. Mm. Oh. Or not. Or not. No, no, we'll do it. <laughs> apparently, we'll go through the install. Uh, you can see it's, uh, it's asking Brian what languages he wants, so he can only bring down the components that really matter. And then we're uh, bringing them down onto his machine and installing those. Uh, and you can see the set of components that we, that we have here. So we now have a single unified installer for all the components that are in the, in the Google Cloud Platform so you can get up and running very quickly. What do you think? And we'll get there, yeah. We'll get there in just a, bit, in just a minute. As soon as, yeah, so yes. So how are you enjoying the day so far? <laughs> yeah, this, so this, yeah, so we're there done we now. Okay, great. So Brian's just going to update a few install steps. Okay, now we have uh, G Cloud installed. Um, so you probably saw in the keynote, but we can do a little uh, uh, playing with G Cloud. So it's got some tab completion here. All right, so I'll do G Cloud, and I'll hit tab a couple times and see what my options are. And, well, let's look at the components. So I'll type that, double tab it. And I can complete my components. And I'll see what the options are for that. And as we saw in the uh, keynote, you can actually list what components you have installed and what's available. All right. All right, yeah. So I think we're ready to initialize this project, aren't we? 
Well, Brad, I think we need to authorize first. Authorization, <laughs> yes. So how hard is it to log in and give your credentials and whatnot? Well. Yeah, so what, right, <laughs> <laughs> so what Brian's going to do um, is actually use OAuth now to go and authenticate so that this instance of the SDK knows who he is on Google so he can access all his Google um, accounts and whatnot for the cloud platform. Okay, so now I think we're ready to uh, initialize. So we are. We're going to do a G Cloud init and use the project ID that Brian created earlier. Um, and this is a brand new project, so there's no code in the repository. But if there were, it would, it would sync that down. Either way, it's setting up his local instance. Okay, so um, I guess we're ready to get started writing some code. We are. So you have some, you, I guess the first step here is we're going to create a couple of REST endpoints. We're going to create one to list those meme templates that we have to base the memes on, one to create a new meme, to upload a new meme, and one to list all the finished memes. So look, Brad, I think we need to start with writing those endpoints. So I'll drag over a file that I set up ahead of time. Yeah, Julia Child style. <laughs> I like it. And go ahead and open that up. And as you can see at the top there, we've got our standard endpoints for imports for endpoints. Um, then we set up our client IDs for who can access it. And then you see a couple classes that we've got to wrap messages between the endpoints and the mobile client. So we've got one for memes, and we're sta storing the standard metadata, the image URL, the text, an ID to track it later, a uh, user, and then it votes. And then uh, we've also got a, cl a class to wrap that as a collection, and that's meme collection. And if we keep scrolling down the file, we see a standard endpoints definition. So we're defining our API. We've got cloud meme, we've got a version, a description, and then the allowed clients. So basically locking it down to our mobile client. And so we can walk through next from there into a couple of functions we created on our endpoint. Namely, the first one, create. We're going to expect to be able to create memes on this service. Yeah, and, and notice this is an HTTP post. And you'll see in a minute, you can just use curl to be able to access these. So these are standard REST interfaces. And as you can see, we've stubbed it out, so we'll give it a response for our early testing. And the next one we can look at is listing. You're going to expect to list memes once you've put them up. So we've got there, and you notice this one is a get. So you can do a standard get just to get a list of your memes. And we're returning a stored set of memes. All right. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I think we're, we basically have the first part of the demo ready. Are we ready to just go ahead and, and push that up? Well, let's go ahead and add it into our local repository first. Of course. And commit that. So we're just committing it to the local repository on Brian's laptop. So now we're ready to push it up. Look, Brad, I think we need to put some unit tests. Unit, you're such a Google engineer doing testing Ooh, all yeah. the time. So I guess you already have those ready prepared well, as well. Yeah, I have <laughs> a few that I added in there. All right. So we have some uh, basic endpoints and we have some tests written for those endpoints. And look, Brad, we're going to need one more thing. If you want to make this an App Engine app, we should make it an App Engine app. app. We should make it an App Engine app as well. So I'll go drag that in, and we take a quick look at it. And those familiar with App Engine, you can see we've set up our application. We've got a version, a runtime, a few other settings in there, and then our handlers. We've set up our endpoints handler. All right. So, so uh, now Brian's just going to commit the. Uh, app.yaml file and the test file to his local repository. And then we'll do a git push and push that up to the repository that the developer console has for us already. OK, and so that's going to take just a minute to push up. So you want to flip over to the developer console? Absolutely. So as we saw earlier, you go to the develop, developer tab there. Yeah, so uh, as we saw earlier, we have a free private Git repository that's hosted for you that you can use. It's accessible to all the members of your team. Um, and then, uh, you know, of course, if you want to use GitHub, you can absolutely do that. Um, and then after the push has happened as a post commit action, we're going to run our Python unit test. You saw Brian add some unit tests. And the way we're going to do that is we have a 
virtual machine spun up, and it's already running Jen Jenkins. And Jenkins is an open source workflow management tool that's, that's pretty popular. And it's got plugins for everything. One of the plugins is to run Python unit tests. So you want to switch over and look at that VM? Yeah, let's do that. So that VM has been spun up, and you can see in a second probably the spikes where Brian has been practicing this demo. Uh, and what we're doing on this machine right now, we've already prepared it with, uh, or the cloud platform prepared it for us with Jenkins. And then when we did that push, it pulled the code down onto the VM, and it, uh, it started executing all those unit tests. So uh, at this point, we can see the progress on the unit tests and see how they're going. Absolutely. So if we switch it, yep, and the release history. So we should see an entry there for the unit test. Um, yep, and you can see uh, the tests have already done and deployed. But why, why don't we go ahead and look at the tests, though? Um, so these are the, the test results page. Uh, so you can see here the list of all the tests and the runtime. Uh, Brian wrote some very efficient <laughs> tests there, it looks like. Stubbed out for now, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, okay, so there's the test results. So at this point, if there was a break in your test, you could use this to drill in and figure out what the issue was. So then uh, if we go back to release, I guess that we pushed it to production now, so we're ready to test that out. It is deployed. So, but what we, remember what we built was a set of REST endpoints. So how are we going to interact with those REST endpoints and test them out to see if they're really working? Well, we can use the API Explorer. So as you can see, with any app that you have, you can actually type in, use the specially defined URL to give you the Explorer. Yeah, so uh, underscore AH is the sort of magic system provided URL space for App Engine, and then slash API gets you into endpoints, and then slash Explorer will bring you into this view with your own API set. So, so you can see this yeah. is the API we defined, Cloud Meme API. And coming into there, we have the functions we defined on each of those. Awesome. So, so let's we take go a look. ahead and test list, for example. Yeah, and that's returning um, the hard-coded set that we have. Notice in the first box there, it's showing you exactly what the sort of curl command would be, what the HTTP git is to be able to access this method, and then it shows you the response in JSON. So this is a nice debugging tool. Um, it's a nice way to establish whose bug something is, if it's on the client or on the server. You know if it works here, then it's not a server issue. Yep. And we go back, we can even test our create. So probably we stubbed that out as well. And inside the request body, you can add in the elements that we expect. So I'll put in a test URL, as well as some test text. And I can go ahead and execute that as well. Oh, it looks like you got an error there. <laughs> we do need to authenticate. Okay. So we are going to ask our users to authenticate to create memes. So you can do that here by clicking on a top button at the top and authorizing. And then we can go ahead and run that same query. Yep, and notice here in the request, again, it shows you the um, metadata that you need to send up with the request to be authenticated. So again, if you wanted to try this, uh, write, write your own lightweight wrapper, for it, you could in JavaScript or whatnot. And then, of course, it shows you the results. Absolutely. OK, so I think we got the first step done, right? We do. OK, so let's switch back to the slides. Uh, so what, you sh what we just showed you is that it's very easy to get started. We talked about using those standard tools. We showed you the simple build, test, and deploy, and how to test the service with API Explorer. Uh, obviously, we only touched on this briefly. If you want to drill in more in this uh, room, they'll, at 1 o'clock, there'll be a DevOps at Google um, that I encourage you to come to where we'll drill into it in more detail. Okay, we're ready to, for step two. So Brian said we're going to build an Android app, so let's jump right into that. Uh, we're going to focus on two key pieces of that. One is we're going to build an Android-optimized uh, Java client library for the services that you just saw. And we're going to show how to integrate that with Android Studio. So back to the demo machine. All right, we're back in our directory that we added our files in. And we can run the endpoints command, get here. We'll get the client live out of it. We'll give it Java. We'll give it our class name. And then we'll ask for it to build, give us a build system, and we'll use Maven. 
Yeah, so what this is doing right now is it's taking the description of the service, the generic description of the service, and it's creating an Android optimized Java client library for it. So that, you know, as an Android developer, I want to interact with classes. Um, those entities should be classes, and the methods, the REST methods should actually be methods on a class, on a request factory. And that's exactly what you're seeing here. All the entities Brian created earlier in Python, we now have Java versions of them. And then we have um, the cloud memes request as well. So now what's left to go, oh, do you want to look at one of them? Well, or, yeah, Brian, let's look at one of them. That's fantastic. We'll them. Yeah. yeah. So as you can see, it's creating basically a model for you to, to wrap all the communication between the endpoint. And then if you come in here, you can see it's creating for this one, we are looking at basically a cloud meme collection. And this is showing building a collection up of cloud memes. And yep. standard getter and setter methods for it. Yep. So this is going to handle all the authentication hassles, all the network plumbing, all the serialization and deserialization to JSON and back. So really, it, it makes this very simple to use. And so the next step is going to be to basically install it on our Maven repository. Yep. Install it locally. So because in just a minute we're going to access it from Android Studio, Android Studio uses Gradle as its build system, which knows how to speak to the local Maven repository. So to make that easy, we're going to put it into our local Maven repository here. So I think that with, is that, that didn't quite uh, work there, <laughs> Brian. No, did not. Make sure I'm in the right directory. Ah, OK, yes. Go. All right. OK, great, yes. So now he's got it in his local Maven repository. Uh, now we're going to pop up Android Studio, right? Absolutely. So Android Studio is an IntelliJ-based IDE that we're uh, moving to. It's a good option if you're an Android developer. Um, and what we're going to do, actually, uh, Brian already created most of the Android app. Um, the boring bits of the Android app, all the UI, all the user interaction is already done. And what we're going to show now is how to access the service that we defined. So I guess the first thing you need to do is change the Gradle build file. Absolutely. So we'll open that up. And we'll add in our dependency on the uh, new cloud meme library. We'd, and we can go ahead and sync that. Yeah, so again, um, Android Studio uh, uses Gradle as its build system. That's a, you might recognize it's a Groovy-based build language. Uh, and that's really important for the flexibility that you need to build when you're building Android apps, targeting multiple devices and whatnot. And what we've done here is just referenced that library that we just added to our Maven repository. OK, so we've got the library. Now um, I see you've got the source code in there. Yeah, so we'll, we'll open up our uh, meme lister. We're going to have to list our memes. And then we'll go ahead and add in some initial code to access that new library. Yeah, so now we're going to show the code that's uh, actually required in order to uh, call those methods. So if we walk through this very quickly, we can see we're in importing the uh, Android app. You can see from here we're creating our service that we're going to use to communicate to the endpoint. At this point, we build it. And then for handling the intent, this is basically communicating with the UI layer. We can create our new meme. And then we can handle the create turn back from the back end. OK. So that looks pretty good, right? We're ready to run it? Let's do it. Um, so just to make it more fun, uh, we've already got a version of the app running on this phone. So can we switch to the phone? Um, so this is what the resulting app looks like going against those services. Notice we uh, only have a couple of those stock memes that are there. But we have the basic UI functionality in place. Um, we've got the meme there. And I can say, hi, boss. And I can go ahead and post that. And it's calling our service. But of course, the service is stubbed out. So when we do the list again, we get the same static uh, defined ones. But we have shown that we can build a basic Android application and that it can call our services up there on the server. So ready to, can we switch back to slides, please? OK, so right, what we just showed you was creating this strongly typed Java client library using the endpoints command. We, we talked about the Maven package management support and how to build the Android app. So uh, at the end of the day today, or at, at 3.30 today, there will be a whole talk just on building cloud backends for Android apps that will be right in here. So I encourage you to go to that if you want more info. OK, 
we're ready for the next step. Um, it's time to make this thing really production. It's sort of a toy app so far. We're ready to make it real. To make it real, we're going to do two things. We're going to store that image data. We're going to store it in Google Cloud Storage, in our blob storage, our bucket storage there. And we're going to spin up a MongoDB cluster and store the metadata for those images in that cluster. OK, Brian, are we ready to roll on that? OK, let's switch back to Brian's demo machine. So if we're going to add in the next service, we're going to go back to our files. And we've prepped a few more uh, to uh, accomplish this. I think the first thing we'll do is actually add in our cloud storage and our image generation. And if we pop open the cloud storage, take a quick look at that. You can see we're importing our cloud storage Python library, which is again a Google provided library, setting up a URL for our memes to be at. Coming into our upload method, we can see we're defining a unique ID, assigning it a file name that we're going to upload to cloud storage. And in the middle of the file, we're creating our cloud file on cloud storage, putting in settings there for writing a file that it's going to be a PNG image, and then it's public readable. And then from there, we're basically writing out the binary image that we pass into this function into that cloud storage file. And then the last step is actually writing it out to cloud storage. Yeah, that looks pretty easy. So again, what Brian's showing you here is code that's running on App Engine that's taking the image and uh, stitching it together, putting the text on it, and then storing that off to cloud storage. So uh, you want to show it in cloud storage? Yeah, show the cloud storage viewer? So if we come into the uh, developer console and you're on your application, you can click down on cloud storage. And you get to your browser. As you can see, we've set up some buckets for use. Cloud meme bucket is the one we'll be writing to. And, and it's not see, really in Spanish, though, is it? It's not in Spanish, no. <laughs> um, and as you can see, we've actually been doing a bit of testing. So we've got some memes in here already. And again, this is all going to be accessed from your application, both writing and reading. OK, so that looks great. So that's the basic story for storing memes in cloud storage, storing the image data in cloud storage. The next step we need to do is store the metadata. That is the text description so we can do um, searches on it, the who, who uploaded the meme, and uh, other metadata. So in order to do that, we need to, we need to create a MongoDB cluster, don't we? Let's do that. So um, we're actually going to use Cloud Deployment Manager, which we'll, uh, you'll hear about a little bit later. But it's a way to deploy software onto Compute Engine instances. And we're going to spin up several nodes of MongoDB um, and, and uh, configure them for us to use. Absolutely. So basically, on this page, we have a way to deploy MongoDB in a large in a size cluster. So basically, we set up a replica name. You can choose a zone, choose a network to deploy it to give it a prefix, and then actually choose the count you want to deploy of nodes, as well as set up your disk sizes and your arbitrary. Yeah, and you can just uh, hit de deploy cluster there. Um, that's going to take a few minutes to deploy. So we, all, we already actually have a MongoDB cluster that we deployed earlier. Um, so we're going to switch over to use that. Uh, but this is a great way if you want to experiment with the platform, uh, do some performance testing on it, do some capability testing. This is an easy way for you to go put some open source packages up there and, and see how they perform for you. And of course, all this is being deployed on virtual machines that you own, that you can go and SSH into, control however you want. Um, so they're, they're fully yours. So the next thing we'll do is actually add in the connector for the Mongo. So I've got a little code I prepped ahead of time. So we'll go ahead and cut and paste that back into our API file. And as you can see, for the import, we're inputting our PyMongo library. We're setting up our Mongo connect string. If you're familiar with Mongo, you'll, notice, you'll recognize the user, password, IP, and then the database. We've got to remember to change that password after this. We'll definitely change that password. <laughs> um, and from there, we can add in, actually, for, first to add in our create. So we've got a create function here. So we'll scroll down to create. And we'll create, basically pasting our create there. And then we'll also have a way to list our memes, get the netabay back from Mongo. So we'll go ahead and take that and paste that in. 
replacing our stubbed implementation. And then we forgot to do one more thing. So I'll scroll up. We did forget to put in the code for our cloud storage connector. So we'll go, mm. ahead, and <laughs> we'll go ahead and add that in as well. So we'll add in our imports for cloud storage. Those are handy comments you have there. Are it's very comments. helpful. <laughs> and the bucket. And then we'll go ahead and add in the code to create the meme as well as upload it to cloud storage. Back into our create and replace our stubbed implementation. And now we're ready to create it in the cloud. OK. So now what we have is code that can um, store images in cloud storage and store the metadata into MongoDB. And then when we do the listing, it pulls the image URL out of cloud storage and pulls the metadata out of MongoDB and returns that back to the client all over REST endpoints. And so to make this happen, we've got a few libraries we need to okay, as well, right. just standard libraries. So we'll drag those all in, go back to our console, add the stuff we just committed to the local repo. Mongo. OK, so this is going to take just a minute. Uh, Brian's going to commit it to his local repository. And then he's going to do a git push and deploy it up to the App Engine app. Now, what's going to happen on the App Engine app is we're going to sync down all the source code that he just created, um, including his unit tests, onto that Compute Engine instance. And then we're going to um, use Jenkins to orchestrate a workflow that has us doing uh, tests, uh, running all of his unit tests across, across those. Um, and then when those unit tests are done, go ahead and push that out into production. Now, all that's going to take a couple of minutes. So, uh, in the meantime, okay, let's look at the release history, and maybe we can look at the diffs between releases. Absolutely. So one of the things that is very cool uh, is that we actually roll up all the release diffs into a single view. So imagine you have a production issue, and you're debugging it. You want to know what code changes went in this last time. So if we do that, um, we see this diff view here. Notice there's two different changes that went in, uh, both done by Brian. but in a big project, you might have them done by several people. And then we can kind of get a sense for what changed at, at, at this particular release. So just click on one of them, and let's see. Yeah, I'll click on a more interesting one. Okay. <laughs> Not that one. Any <laughs> Not one that but one. that one. OK, well, it's, it, all of them are starting from blank. Is that yeah, basically the deal? Yeah. OK, yeah. So anyway, it would show you exactly what the changes are. So now, should we go over and see how, what well, our progress is? I just is? realized we did forget one more thing. Oh, We've, my goodness. We're in one our more thing. YAML, and we just want to make sure that we update this to the latest uh, version. So we're okay. make a change. Um, ah, yes. The and demo sure version. It to the real version, yeah. Call it demo one for now. OK, yep. So you're seeing the real thing. Uh, so now we get to go deploy it again. And now, um, what will happen now is if, if it's not done, uh, with the build and test, when a new one comes in, it actually scraps that one and starts over with the new one. So it doesn't wait for the first one to finish because we notice this kind of thing happens. Uh, you know, right at the last minute, you figure you missed something, so there's no point in finishing the build on the other one if there's a new one right behind. And so you can see we've come to our source. We see that our source repository has already been updated. And then right now it's pushing it out, putting it into a Yep. Pushing into Jenkins, doing the uh, unit tests. So you want to see if we're if it's. Let's see if it's it, reached a unit test now. So the way this works is this line is actually written as soon as the unit tests start to run. In the case of Python or in the case of Java, as soon as the build starts. Yep. Um, so is it is it there? It's there. It's okay, there. great. Yeah, fantastic. Oh, and it already deployed. It's a deploy. Yeah. Awesome. So we're ready to test it out. So you want to test it out in API Explorer? Absolutely. All right, so we can come back into API Explorer, just refresh. We see our methods we had before. They're no longer stubbed out, so we'll go ahead and do our list. Yeah, and so this list at this point um, is, uh, uh, we have a great server error there. Well, look, I'll make sure we're on the right version now. OK, so what, uh, what Brian's going to do now, so App Engine actually supports having multiple versions of your application running in production at the same time. Um, and that's, that's useful for doing things like A-B testing. It's useful when you're staging out a release. Maybe you want to um, ha have it only accessible 
uh, to a few people and then roll it out to be the main version. So we'll go ahead and do a list on that. And now, okay, now we got them. And look, those are real. So that's pulling this metadata directly out of MongoDB. So the MongoDB instance running on GCE, um, pulling that data through to App Engine, and then it, it sends it out, uh, serializes it to this JSON interface. And we'll go cool. ahead and list, uh, we have a set of templates that we can build from, so we'll go ahead and list those. And you can maybe grab one of those URLs. I'll grab that top URL there. And then my favorite thing, you can go in and actually post a new meme. And this time when he posts a meme, it will actually create that meme, store the meme in cloud storage, and store the metadata in MongoDB. And then we'll make sure we auth before we send that on. Ah, uh, yes. And we'll Just go next see if that, point. yes, fantastic. Okay, so it looks like it worked. Um, it, did it, it did it create the meme? It did so what Urs says goes. Okay, so now what we want to do, can we switch over to the mobile device? And you see, I just refreshed this um, right now as they were coming, and the very first meme is the one he created, what Urs says goes. So pretty cool, huh? <laughs> and of course, um, I can do the same thing. I can say, oh, whoops. Yes, boss. Whoops. <laughs> uh, and I can go ahead and post that. And now I'm posting it from the Android device. It's going up through the App Engine endpoint, storing the image in cloud storage, the metadata in MongoDB, and then returning all the results back down to the device. So that's pretty neat. OK. So are we ready to switch back to slides? Uh, yes. Yeah, OK, so let's go back to slides. Um, yes, yeah, so. Did we do this one? Yes. No, we didn't do this one. OK. So what we just showed you was the cloud storage MongoDB thing. Um, it, I mentioned uh, MongoDB uses uh, Google Deployment, Deployment Manager. And you saw some of the replica pool stuff uh, Brian just touched on a little bit. There's a whole session on that at 1 o'clock upstairs that you can go and drill in and learn more about that. And I know some of these sessions conflict in time. All this is being preserved on the internets forever, so uh, you can go watch these at, at your leisure later. OK, so that's step three. But you know, I'm not really satisfied yet, Brian. I mean, we got a working application, but we haven't really proven to these people that it can scale yet. So I think we should show that. So we're going to show some very simple load testing. And then we're going to use that load testing uh, to isolate an issue in production. Uh, and then show you how we can fix that issue in production very quickly. OK, you want to take it away? Back to the demo machine. Are we good? Yeah. All right, so we're going to basically kick off a load test. And we'll just use Apache Bench as we're using the, uh, in the keynote. Uh, but look, for this one, we're going to throw a little bit more at it. So I'm going to say throw a billion rows. I don't know. A billion, that's pretty good. Yeah, well, maybe we'll go, I don't know, 200 concurrent. And then we'll give a URL we can hit. So uh, Brian defined a special endpoint for create that just tests out storing a, a particular image to cloud storage and storing some metadata to MongoDB. Um, and so hitting this a million times, um, 200 at the 200 si simultaneous, is going to give us a pretty decent QPS, uh, queries per second or requests per second. Um, at Google, everything is queries, so we call them queries per second. Um, so we're hitting that, and now we're going back to the, ad, uh, the developer console here, and you can see some of the graphs are starting to, starting to notice the increased load there. Um, and I notice, Brian, these um, errors by status code, just scroll down a little bit. Um, we're starting to see, uh, or at least last time you did the demo, we saw <laughs> we do a few spikes coming up, yeah. A few spikes. There's a little latency in the graphs, so we'll see a spike in 500s in a minute. So why don't we switch over to the, data, the uh, logs viewer and see if we can find out why we're seeing those log errors. So, so, so again here, um, what we're seeing is all those requests are coming in, and each request from whatever front end, I think, I think we said we had five or ten front ends running right now. Um, there's about five front ends running right now, and we're aggregating logs from all those front ends and putting them here. Every create is creating a log entry. And you notice some of them are actually uh, 500s. Um, so you're going to filter down yeah, to, to find just those 500s. 
So those are, those are troubling. Uh, that means we actually have an issue in production, and it seems to be happening for only some requests. So we need to debug this and figure out what's happening. Well, it looks like there's an exception, Brad. There's an exception, well, so at, it's bad. Let's track that down, and we can click down in the file. Yeah, so in the keynote, we showed you that in Java, and here we're showing you it in Python, so the same basic infrastructure works no matter what language you use. And as you see, it dropped us into the file and highlighted the line that's causing the problem. Yes. That, I think that random five is probably it, the source of your... It looks a little your, bit manufactured. Right? Yeah, it looks a little bit of an issue. So again, at this point, because it's in a Git repository, uh, we could go back to the local machine and fix this issue. But because it seems like a pretty obvious fix, I think, um, Brian's just going to click on edit here and go ahead and um, remove this erroneous change. And then he's going to commit that back to uh, his production Git repository. And so um, you should probably have this down by now, what's going to happen when he uh, clicks commit, right? So it's going to put that change into the Google hosted repository. And then it's going to sync down the code into the uh, Compute Engine virtual machine that's running uh, Jenkins on there. And then that Jenkins workflow is going to kick in, and it's going to run all our unit tests across there. And given that those pass, hopefully, uh, we'll deploy that out into production. So that we'll might take just a minute for we'll it to deploy it. out to production. OK, so yeah, so what, ha what's, what we're showing you here is that it's already um, deployed, it's already run all our tests, and it just finished deploying to production. So now, if we go back to the logs viewer, we should see uh, a beautiful lack of 500s. If we are successful here, as he scrolls down, remember we're still hitting this site with a billion requests, right? So it's going to take a while to get through those. And now we don't see any 500s. So I think our logs are clean. That's pretty good, Brian. Yeah, Thanks, good, man. Yeah. That's good. All right. Cool. OK, so back to slides, and then let's uh, wrap us up here. So what we showed you in this part is we showed some basic load testing with a patchy bench. We showed you how to do some debugging in production and how to fix that production issue. So if you want to hear more about how some of this works under the covers, what's really going on, uh, at 2 o'clock there will be a scene inside your service session. That's a good one for you to check out. OK, so wow, um, we did a bunch here, Brian. Like We started absolutely from scratch. We built a real-world Android application. It had MongoDB and Google Cloud Storage in it. And then we showed the whole DevOps workflow here. So I think that's, that's pretty good for 50 minutes, don't you think? Not bad. Yeah. I have a hunch there might be a few people that want the source code uh, for what you just did. Uh, and Brian uh, will post that shortly uh, uh, up on his GitHub repository, so you can go and check that out. Um, and then. A lot of what we've shown is already available to you in the Cloud Console, but there's a few things that were not quite ready. So if you want to get trusted tester access, um, there's a form you can fill out there. Uh, all of it will be ready in the next few weeks, but if you just can't wait and you need the linking logs to source or some of the other features, um, you can fill out this form and get access to that. So thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, we have a couple minutes for questions, I think. So any, any questions for us? Anyone? Yes, right here. Yeah, so the question was about A-B testing and staged rollouts. So um, we don't have any built-in support for that right now, but it's absolutely something that's on our, on our roadmap to go do. Yes. Yeah, so the question was in performance between cloud endpoints on Android and just like an HTTP library. I think you'll find they're very uh, similar because you saw the REST requests that we were showing. Uh, you can hit those with curl. There's very little extra metadata that we're sending down for cloud endpoints. Um, so I, you know, I, I suggest you go do some perf testing, but it should be pretty close. Okay. Oh, and there's a mic. Fantastic. I can, I can repeat. I can repeat. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes. 
So it's something we're looking at. Today we're looking at purely a launch. Once you get it launched, you can manage it yourself. But ongoing, we'll look at additional tools we can provide. Yeah, but, but I mean, Brian, when we were building this demo, very regularly uh, went to the Mongo. In fact, can you bring it up? Can you bring up the Mongo admin console? So it's just installing Mongo on a GCE uh, image. So all the existing MongoDB admin tools work. So we haven't done anything special. What, what Brian's mentioning, we haven't integrated the MongoDB admin UI into our developer console, but you can just hit the right URLs, right? Uh, no. Not yet. Well, not yet. Not soon. Yet. Like something we're soon. working on. Soon. OK. Coming soon. OK, yes. Uh, plan languages. So there is a session. There is a session called something like New Languages in App Engine that I encourage you to, to go to. Okay, so I think we're just about out of time. We're, this is the only thing separating you from lunch. Um, so uh, Brian and I will be up here for a few more minutes, so feel free to come grab us if you have more questions. Thank you. Thank you.